Have I tried Hacker on top? Yes, I have. The Stanton Jack's very good. I think it's a very good item. Just against Camille specifically, true damage. Um, it's nice to build Star Axe for insurance, for example, but uh, it's still good. Champs like Jacks work perfectly fine and competitive. What's my opinion on Phil Top? It's a very interesting pick, and it's something that I should definitely look have a deeper look into. Seems quite strong, from what I can tell. What picks are good into Wukong? Um, I think AP Bruiserish champions are good into Wukong, so you've got Singed, for example, I was told is very good into Wukong by uh, Socialist Singed. Um, I believe champions like Set. Anything that's stronger than him in the all-in, or like anything that deals a significant amount of burst damage before he can stack up his passive, or deals magic damage and is beefy enough to take the brunt of his burst. Yes, Mordekaiser is a good example, Singed, um, Malphite, I think those are some good examples. Orn, perhaps. Stuff like this. I'm going to go ahead and... What am I going to pick? Kind of waiting to see if this guy picks a mage bot or an AD carry. Because he might play something like Ziggs bot. In which case, I think it's fine to pick Wukong. Yeah, there we are. He picks Syndra. We're going to play Wukong game here. I will be the best. If he baited me and went last minute for an AD carry there, I would have been a little bit upset. But it's all good. Like, we should both be fine into both. Even if we're, like, losing slightly, it shouldn't matter at all. Like, it's like a minor, minor losing situation. It's not, like, anything serious, in my opinion. <laughs> Which do you want? Okay, then go top. I need to know, because of what uh, item I'm going to be using. Against Camille. I, think, I mean, Darn Shield wouldn't hurt, right? She has Ignite, so just staying healthy is probably a good play. Uh, I should be able to farm it by two, though. Pfft. I'll go Corrupting. Do something in the middle. The only time I'm gonna trade with Camille is when my crafting is active anyway, so let's do it this way. This is W, so I'm not too scared of her. Like, this is such a grief of a gank. Like, what a grief of a gank. <laughs> what an absolute grief of a gank. This is so bad for me, it's not even funny. I just lost so much experience for absolutely nothing. Even if he hits that hook, that changes completely zero for my lane matchup. Just one creep. I'm like one creep down in experience, which I would have liked not to be. But all good, I guess. The reason why this matters is because I actually need XP to push this next wave. I need to push and cheater here. Uh, I chunked her out quite, quite good there. I'm gonna TP on the wave here because I don't wanna get ganked or anything silly like that. I'm just gonna try to freeze the wave here. That's all that matters. As you can see, I'm still shooting. <laughs> Here's where you notice me sharing that experience from earlier. Like, I would have been, um, I would have needed two creeps to level up here. Like, after this wave, two creeps. Now I'm gonna need a hell of a lot more experience. I'm super far behind in experience. The TP advantage. Quick, quick trade there. Keep the kindred interested. Oh, we just go here. I don't know, like <laughs> I don't know what to do here, really. I don't really want to go there. My wave is more important. Him contesting here is very good. So even though we don't get anything, pushing them off like this and denying them the experience in gold is still very valuable. Like, look, kindred basically has to lane here. You don't have to lane anymore here. Like he can just back off. Graves playing very well this game, giving me a lot of space to play my matchup and get an advantage out of my teleport. <laughs> she is sinning out of her mind right now, just actually attack moving on the top lane with no regard for her minion wave or what is happening in the game. Just attack move straight into the top side with no mercy. Absolute psychopath of a Camille player. Didn't care that I was out of the laning phase. Ran straight up in the top lane and is about to get frozen on once more. Gonna pick up the ninja tabai. Quite good against their mid jungle duo, even though I don't need it to win Camille. It's still good. And guess what, boys? The sinner has to repent. Another couple of minutes of freezing. Look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful sight. Sinner being punished. I lane swap. Oh. All good. I have ninja tabai, so that's a bit unfortunate. I guess I didn't calculate that for, to, for that to happen. So, he's not that strong. Oh, couldn't quite. 
I'm gonna use my ult here to go all in. Alright. Couldn't quite kill him. Traded ults and chunked him out though. Put me in a position where uh, I can maintain my freeze in my wave state. Trading ults. I'd have played a little bit better. Maybe I could have killed him actually. I actually pox Razor Rush off my clone. It's annoying. There's Body Slam. Kindred is right there. I have no mana to fight, unfortunately. I'm gonna base and look for a teleport here. I don't want to build here. Pick two of these up. I can look here. Golden, golden, golden right now. That was the timing. I missed the timing. Nice. She should be able to get that wave in. That was a good teleport play here. He's a little bit too greedy there. Oh, yikes. I'm running. Graves can enjoy having that minion wave for himself. I'm basing. He was threatening uh, to freeze the wave on me there. Should be dead here. Yep. So Dragus is misplaying the matchup quite a bit, so I can keep picking up kills here. I'm not going to greed or do anything silly here for the wave. Just going to go ahead and... Thought he had vision of me, that's why I opened up on him, but we'll see what happens, I guess. Did they have it under control? No, they did not. I'm gonna leave my wave here and send it up a little tiny bit. The enemy team is sinning, and so. It is not. I am not the hero we deserve. The hero we need. We shan't let him freeze. As such, Wukong shows up. No freezing on our watch. Sinning? Um, it's a. Oh, messed up there. Um, it's a kind of a. It's a meme, kind of. I'm not sure if I should call it a meme. It's just a, a term to describe. Players feast so oh, I keep missing I keep missing on my CS. Um, it's a term to describe uh, solo queue players attempting to feast on the weakness of many other solo queue players by roaming and taking very high variance plays and profiting from there uh, because you're opting into taking high variance plays instead of taking consistent well just consistent outcomes really instead of taking the consistent outcome for example this camille she ran up to the topside river to try and kill the echo when she had me in a lane lock where i was kind of stuck in lane and i couldn't get a reset um instead she opted to just run straight straight top lane let me hard push the wave didn't even care that i used all my moves on the wave and killed echo uh, which resulted in a situation where she was actually in a worse spot than had she just played out her lane and tried to win that way we're getting dragon here for free. Well, I'm definitely gonna have to teleport here, aren't I? Alright, I'm gonna teleport here. I can't get the E there. Lose. Wait. I guess they just both lived. That's my bad. I was going for the Camille there, thinking that someone else would have. would have uh, finished them off. Anyway, I did my job. I'm gonna go topside here now. Alright, that was an int. I should have just left. It was obvious he was trying to bait. Ah, it was my bad. The only play he had was bait me there. I thought I was gonna speed up, catch up with him with my ult, and then finish him off, but it was just an int. I had too much of a shutdown. 
Wait, how did he die so fast? That guy's dead. Good night. Maybe I should have cut off the Rakan. Well, that kind of sucked. Well, that worked out for the better. When you go Black Lever, Blade of the Iron King, or Triforce on a Bruiser, well, ask yourself, what are these items good at? So, Trinity Force is good at uh, dealing uh, s small increments of extra burst damage on champions that have auto attack enhancing spells, such as Wukong's Crashing Blow. Uh, a little Sheen proc on that, or a Trinity Force proc, can be quite devastating. She's gonna ult here with Kindred, right? Yeah. Gonna make sure I stick with Graves to finish her off here. I'll just do this. I'm not really interested in killing him. So, like I was saying, um, when you want to deal small increments of increasing damage, or like a little bit of extra burst damage, Trinity Force is often better. Um, on champions that you're, like, you have to imagine that when you build Black Cleaver as an item, keep in mind that it takes a lot of stack. So, um, in Wukong's case, me casting my ultimate and finishing my first channel of my ultimate would stack it fast, would, would stack it, and then I would uh, continue to burst. So if I'm in a, in a teamfight situation where me stacking my ultimate on multiple targets like that is valuable, then Cleaver can be a good option. If I'm in a situation where I don't value that as much, like for example this game, I'm going to be cancelling my ultimate to get more Qs in because the champions I'm fighting are relatively squishy. I'm gonna use my ult to kill her there. Um, again, save it until she uses E and then knock her up. So I'm Kindred mostly. Like, they're not like super. Like, uh, Kindred isn't super squishy if she goes for like a Tabi build, which honestly she probably should have this game. Um, but still, it's not like she's tanky by any means. Okay, I got knocked out there, so I can't really participate in that fight. If I didn't get knocked out by the Gragas Cask, I could have helped her out. You know, that's when the fight's decided. That's very unlikely as a champion that, like, um, you're gonna stack up that whole passive, and that's when the fight gets decided. I'm gonna go ahead and flash on this kindred here. That should still be a good fight. I'm gonna stack my passive up to full here. I'm gonna E out here and dodge that. I can jump in here in two seconds. Oh, I got knocked. Finish off the Rakan for a Triumph proc there. Oh, barely, barely didn't live there. Oh, it's a shame on the pike hook there. Oh, he lived. Look at those dust dance abusers going off. Happen. Kindred, the same thing. Camille, the same thing. All these champions lose to me if, if, if I'm able to just right-click them and train them down. Um, and it's those champions that um, Black Lever would obviously be very good against if they manage- or the Blade Rune King wouldn't- would be very good against if they managed not to kite me, but assuming the level of play, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they can reliably kite my champion and stop me from right-clicking them to death. But if you're playing against like Cho'Gath, for example, um, I think it's quite good to build. Uh, the reason being is um, I can dodge his drop tier quite reliably, and I can train him down um, because he only slows me, which is not enough to stop me. But yeah, that's the idea between the three items. So to sum it up, one, um, Black Lever. It's only good if you can stack your Black Lever before the fight gets decided. Um, if you're playing a champion that um, needs to get six stacks on a champion before they're gonna decide to the fight, then I feel like the item's not that great. Unless you can stack it very fast. Trinity Force is good if you want some upfront damage. Extra burst on everything you do. Uh, it gives you more attack speed. It helps you do everything you want to be accomplishing on a bruiser, which is farming, dealing more, a little bit more burst damage when you decide to go in. Attack speed. Some mana. A lot of bruisers enjoy having a little bit a little bit of extra mana pool. And Blade the Rune King would be good in cases where you can train down the enemy champions. So if you're playing against like multiple tanks like Dr. Mundo, Sion, um, Cho'Gath, or bruisers that just want to fight you back, Blade the Rune King can be a good item.